basically, to sum it up, I wanted to make a difference. I did want to make a difference for people's lives. And I wanted to find the way, the best way that I could do that. Nineteen seventy five was quite an important year for me because that was the year I decided that I was going to follow my dreams. I was going to go to England, I was going to become an actress. I'd made up my mind and I decided, right, this was it. I'm going to go and I'm going to follow my dreams. Went to Oldham, which is just outside Manchester. I studied there for three years and had a wonderful time. Finish the course. Okay, I'm off. I'm off now to be an actress. But the theatre world was one that was full of hypocrisy, uh, superficiality, and I couldn't be part of that and be, still be true to myself. So then I decided I would go to London to live, still hanging on, still hanging on to this thought that perhaps in London things might be different. They weren't. So I decided to join an organisation that was focused on hiring artists to work with people with disabilities, mental health problems, doing drama. And uh, I found it was a, an area that I really enjoyed. I loved England passionately, but my parents were getting older and it was time to go back to Australia to be with them. Came back to Australia and I had decided to set up a centre called the Avalon Centre, a centre of creativity and natural healing. It was a, a place of interaction and, and networking and, and companionship. But of all the difficulties that I encountered, I think probably say the people were the most, most difficult of all to overcome. I attracted a lot of people, a lot of what they call the New Age people and I had my own terminology, airy fairy twits. They used to give me advice about uh, one person, for example, wanted to build a pyramid on top of Avalon so we could channel the cosmic energies into the centre. The emotional strain, the financial strain of these people, um, they should have been an endangered species, really. We should have, you know, taken the guns out of it. <laughs> it was time for Avalon to change moving to East Melbourne and opening up Stage 2. And in that time, in fact, it was a week before we moved in, my father passed away. I was sorry that he never got to see Avalon 2, but in a way, it was a new beginning. It was My mother came here and she helped me. It was a part of the grieving process, the healing process. Stage 2 of Avalon, we were running the groups and having the drop-in, and that was very successful. And then I had to start to cut back a few of the groups because of my mother. She, was, um, she wasn't uh, that well and I needed to spend more time with her. I wanted to spend more time with her. Uh, we were very, very close. We had a very close relationship. Uh, and then my mother did pass away. And this, this, this was a very hard time for me because my mother and I were very, very close. I'd lost my best friend and also lost one of my reasons for living in a way because I, I looked after her, I uh, was with her a lot, we shared a lot and I felt very much alone. I was trying to go through a lot of soul searching to find out what was the best step to go, what, where, where do I go from here. the third stage of Avalon, we would expand Avalon and make it a centre that meets unmet needs. And that would be encompassing everything possible. The homeless, people with mental health issues, people who with intellectual disabilities, anybody, drug and alcohol, any problem at all, we were going to meet unmet needs. I don't think she's ever stopped working from the day she opened the centre until now. She's, I don't know how many hours, 25 hours a day, I think she works sometimes. In the early days, I think she, she struggled just to, you know, have enough to live at times. Uh, she was probably living on less than unemployment benefit. I think what's really helped me get through 
the difficult, and there have been difficult times, has been the passion. The passion that I've had from the beginning to get out there and to make a difference to somebody's life. And even if it's just one person's life that you might have helped a person in some way, that to me gives me enough to keep on going. I think the best thing about Javi is she doesn't take herself too seriously, but she does a tremendous job with running the centre. She just has this endless compassion for, for everyone and she's never ever rude. She treats everyone with dignity and respect. I am very satisfied. I feel that we've met a lot of unmet needs. Uh, the people that I've met that have, that have come into my life through the volunteering and uh, have been exceptional people. And I wouldn't have traded that for the world. Has Debbie achieved what she set out to do? Yes. But it's not the way she set out to do it. But because conditions changed, she changed and allowed things to change around her. Debbie's work is very inspirational. She's been doing this for 26 years and her passion for it never wavers and she never ever expects anything in return. I would do it again. I would do it again without, without any... Yeah, I, yes, I have no regrets at all. Some people have said to me, well, you know, you haven't married, you haven't had children. It's, it's, it was your dream when you were a child, and that's true, it was. But I've got people to love, people to care about. I've got purpose, I've got a reason to live. In a way, well, Avalon is my family, and that, that is what is important. <laughs>